Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 260. Dan's Magical Murder Mystery. Right, Dan? I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Uh, and this, you know, tonight we're talking about, uh, you know, one of Zell's brethren, uh, the Atlas Vampire. How can you go ahead and say that when we don't know for sure that it wasn't Zell? You don't know that's, for sure it wasn't me. I don't. True. And I'm not telling you who it was. I will say, I think between this case file and last case file, uh, Zell must have fed because he's not looking as translucent. And he doesn't look like he has jaundice quite as much as he did the last, last case file. It's a nice mustache, though. It's looking good. It's Chris. Murder month, murder and mustache. I said I've been growing it, and I finally shaved it in just immediately before this case file. Yeah, I mean, there's only there's only two cowards left on this podcast. Fucking cowards, cowards. <laughs> Braden just doesn't like the look of his face without the beard. That's I why. don't. I can't. I, can, can't, I can't handle it. It's, yeah, but I look like a fucking idiot with a mustache too. No, you look great. This, no, this is stupid. Yeah, this whole don't care persona I put on. It's fake. It's, oh, it's all super facade. Facade. You're the most, dude, you're the most superficial person on the podcast. If I if I <laughs> shave if I shave my face, that's I'm just like that's it. Like I, I'm a shell of myself. It's like it's like being a turtle out of your shell. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> just naked. Just naked. <laughs> no blue light could cover that up, eh, buddy? No blue light. No. no oh okay. no. Yeah. Oh nothing. no no no. And I was like, I'd have to Snapchat a filter a beard back on. <laughs> Until I grew it back, (laughs) and the problem is, is like I my beard doesn't grow that fast too, so it's like, oh, so you're gonna get McMahon for a while for for a month. Yeah, your chin's McMahon for a month. Yeah, and I'm and your boys, woo, I'm thick, fat brains back, baby. Oh yeah, um, I went to a powerlifting event on Saturday. Okay, hold on, you you as a spectator. That's that's very clear. As a coach. (laughs) As a coach. That's extremely clear. As a coach. Uh, coach, Uh, Technically, well, I was eyeballing the competition because it was a regular meet. I went with the special O guys because there's not another special O event until next year, but we wanted to get the guys, uh, uh, you know, just a nice meet. So we went to a regular powerlifting meet, which uh, I've never been to. I've only ever been to uh, like a special O cross meet where it's like a you know it's like a hall and stuff and this is just a regular meet they happen all over the province and um so we get there and so it's like you know i so our special olympic athletes were you know competing with regular athletes right no big deal their uh weight my weight class i was checking mm-hmm. with my current numbers and i've never really like i'm like i'm sure i can lift a little more i would have finished third place in my weight division what yeah no fucking way. Yes, because the super so heavyweights I, that are above me then go, get insane. <laughs> like, it's insane. Uh, I witnessed a guy break the BC provincial record uh, squatting 706 pounds. I sent Andrew a video of it. It was, it, the place was going insane. It was a madhouse as he was doing it. Then right after... Uh, so he, he tried, he went 686 first, failed. The judges gave him three red lights, which means you failed your lift. Then he went for the record 706, smashed it, then went again and broke his own record that he just set and he squatted 716 pounds. That, that's literally like 290 pounds more than I can squat. It's this guy looked like a bowling ball. Well, that's the power lift your build, ball. man. Yeah. Oh man, he was. Uh, that's why they can bench so much because the bar really doesn't have to move that much. You just yeah, lower it a little bit. Keg. Yeah. yeah. You just drop yeah. it on the keg and fucking. Well, some yeah, of the best lifters there yeah. were these nope. jacked little Asian dudes, man. They were like they looked like dwarfs from uh, Game of Thrones or uh, from Lord of the Rings. Why does they were ta- like? And I'm talking Dan's. I'm Dan. Oh, smaller than Dan's. If they oh, were really, there's no way they were even five feet tall. Right, oh, wow. and the bar, no bar travel, and I was, these guys are just like <clears throat> smashed it. But it was it was really fun. Um, one of our guys finished third in the super heavyweights. He's a big boy; he can lift quite a bit. And then our other two didn't place. But you know, that's they did. Everyone 
everyone broke PBRs, and uh, it was a kind of a cool thing because like PBRs. It, did they also drink? A few personal you cracked a few fucking PBRs. Sorry, PBs, a personal best. Uh, and, and then cracked some PBRs, PBRs to celebrate. You added, you, you, you created like your own word. Yeah, yeah, I like it's, it. I wouldn't expect anything yeah. less, actually. Personal but best record. Was, yeah, personal best record. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. What's the matter with that? Uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was fun to see. I I've never been to a general powerlifting meet. If there's one in your area, if it's as crazy as it was, as this one was, I would say like go watch just for like a holy shit. The, why is everyone going so crazy about lifting weights? Every every single lift, everyone goes up there. The whole crowd's going fucking nuts. Yeah, very like fifty people driven, buddy. Yeah. Oh yeah. You just want to go watch Dude. sweaty dudes. <laughs> Because I was in the back, I was in the back, you know, oiling up because I'm fluffing and stuff. Fluffing yeah. the other boys. Uh, the chalk, the, the whole air in the back was just chalk. And my throat was so dry from just people clapping chalk. That's cool. Clapping well, chalk and James. just dropping farts everywhere. But, anyways, let's get to the task at hand. I mean, the protein Atlas. farts are pretty essential for powerlifting, buddy. That's normal. <laughs> yes. Ripping farts and breaking hearts. Yeah. All right. So we, to end off Murder Month, the first yeah. annual Murder Month. That's it, Dan. Murder. This is it, man. It's it. Last Dan, one. Dan, it's all good, Dan, buddy. It's, it's not a big fucking deep, deep breath, brother. It's all good. Right? You going to chime in a little bit on this one? This one's got a little, uh, it's got a little supernatural flair to it. It does. All right. I guess not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Fine. So the story begins with a girl named Lily Lindstrom, age 32. She's from Malmo, Sweden, which is a town in southern Sweden, which anywhere in Sweden is still more north than pretty much anywhere else in the world. (laughs) It's crazy. People think that Canada claims like true north, strong, and free. Most of the country lives at like 49, 50 degrees. Sweden's like fucking Arctic Circle, most of it, and Finland. Bananas. So I could Some see of the happiest I, places on earth, though. Well, in this case, she wasn't happy <laughs> with the way she lived. <laughs> <is. laughs> so fucked up. So she, she decided to pick up and move. <laughs> Start over, as you will. She divorced her husband, and they moved to the big city of Stockholm, where she started working as a prostitute. Yeah. Sex worker. Sex worker. World's Sex oldest worker trade, for. right? Old trade. That and a carpenter, yeah, pretty much, trade. right? That and a builder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could world oldest trade. Nothing wrong with that. Jesus had to choose between two professions: carpenter, yeah. you had to start somewhere, sex worker. And Jesus was banging both. hookers. So what's eh, hookers? Sex workers. Sex workers. Sorry, sex workers. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. You know? No, not at you, all. What does the Bible want, say? If you, uh, what does the Bible say? <laughs> I don't think the Bible says hookers. But I have, anyways, thou shall not proselytize. Prost. <laughs> Uh, so she found a home in Stockholm with a friend named, is it Mimi? Mimi. 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 Because the ends in Swedish are not ends. So I think it's probably pretty important to point out too, right? Like this is, this is the thirties, right? Like I think it's 1931 when this takes place and this is like right around the collapse of wall street and the great depression. Right. So, Unemployment tough. is yeah. fucking rampant. Dirty 30s. Everybody's struggling to make end, ends meet, and she's a like newly divorcee, right? So, I mean, not a lot of options for her, I'd imagine, for work. No. So, you know, and she chose to. This is the profession she chose sex work. Hey, listen, and she and, and listen, we take any more hits on Patreon, or the Dow Jones takes another drop. We're we're in the same boat, the three of us. So, <laughs> yeah, like, if okay. you're into calamaris, <laughs> fucking hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> So the town, the section of the town, or the region, I guess you call it, was called Atlas. A.K.A. the fucking ghetto. Right. Like, this place was pretty much the hood. It was super known for being, like, a seedy area, you know, and, like, there... It was Rutland of Kelowna. Yeah. Atlas of Stockholm. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10-minute segments, but... Here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks, guys. Enjoy the next video.